Well, this deep pool in front of me is the last in a series of obstacles that we've had to pass, which have included crawls, squeezes and climbs in order to reach this remote spot in the depths of Peak Cavern in Derbyshire. Although the journey is not arduous by today's standards, on March the 22nd, 1959, its physical demands and remoteness became of vital significance. Around three o'clock on that day, a small party of cavers, including an Oxford undergraduate named Neil Moss, came here to photograph the superb formations and continue exploration of a new section of cave in an alcove part way up the slope. Below the alcove is a faint inscription crudely scratched in the rock. Beyond is a tight vertical shaft. The story of the inscription and the tragic consequences of the exploration of the shaft became a testament to bravery and dogged persistence in the face of unimaginable difficulties. The village of Castleton lies to the north of the Derbyshire Peak and is built on and surrounded by limestone that forms the hills so popular with walkers and casual strollers. In the summer months the shops and cafes bustle with visitors from the surrounding towns and major cities. The hills have been hollowed out by the action of water over many thousands of years to form extensive caves, and many seek a welcome break from shopping to visit one or more of the surrounding show caves. The village is dominated by the remains of its 11th century castle, which also overlooks an impressive gorge, at the end of which is the huge gaping mouth of the entrance to perhaps its premier show cave, Peak Cavern. The bright plastic oversuits of cavers are a familiar sight in the village as they make their way to explore the passages beyond the show cave. A typical group sets off for a day's caving, doubtless chatting enthusiastically and recounting details of recent exploits in their world far beyond the light of day. En route through the village they pass the imposing 18th century old hall, now a thriving youth hostel. It gets barely a glance, but it was from here on that fateful Sunday in March 1959 that Neil Moss was to join his fellow cavers. Neil was six foot three tall, slim, fit, and an enthusiastic and experienced caver. He was using the hostel as a base while doing some caving in the Castleton area. In his first term at Oxford University, he'd recently completed his national service as an officer in the Royal Signals. The previous evening had been a get-together of cavers from all over the region of the annual British Speleological Association dinner. Neil was there as a guest of his friend Peter Crabtree, a fellow Oxford University Caving Club member. Two weeks earlier, four of those present had discovered an exciting new chamber in Peak Cavern, and plans were being made to go back the next day. Neil naturally jumped to the chance to join them, and with Peter and two others they made up a party of seven. Today we follow a team of modern cavers on the same journey that they made in 1959 to what was then called the Great Cascade Chamber, now renamed Moss Chamber, 